Good morning. I hope uh, all of you are having a great day today. And I uh, wanted to begin today's uh, lecture with a devotional thought. Um, we talked about last our, our last class period. We read some excerpts from Patrick Henry. And we also read an excerpt from the original draft of the Declaration of Independence. I have two readings again today. One is actually the, a reading um, from <clears throat> William Bennett, the author of this uh, book, or he's the compiler of this of the many letters that are found in this book. And he does a great synopsis of what uh, the founding fathers or the fathers, the founders on slavery, um, between the years 1773 and 1826, uh, some thoughts, the processes in which they were going through, and then uh, the the final excerpt that I'm going to read is going to be uh, the Northwest Ordinance. But uh, these are the words of William Bennett. There's no getting around the fact that many of the fathers held slaves. It is also true that most of the founders, even those who held slaves, struggled and agonized over the existence of an institution so at odds with the principles of American justice. We often look back at the founders and accuse them of hypocrisy. It is easy to regard ourselves as morally superior to them, but in pointing out their hypocrisy, we are not discovering anything that the founders themselves were not aware of. Many, such as the slaveholder Patrick Henry, admitted that there was no rationale for defending this institution, save for the, quote, inconvenience of living here without them, end quote. Most of the founders knew, in the words of Madison, that slavery was, quote, evil, and the, quote, blot, unquote, their Republican character. The delegates to the Constitutional Convention in 1787 recognized this in their debate over what to do about slavery. In Article 1, Section 2 of the Constitution, slaves are referred to as three-fifths a person. This was a compromise reached with the slaveholders of the South who wanted to count slaves as full persons in order to have more representation and ultimately more power. The three-fifths clause of the Constitution prevented the slave interest from dominating the legislative process. In addition, Article 1, Section 9 of the Constitution gave Congress to end the slave trade in 1808. And finally, an important change was made to Article 4, Section 2, which contains the Fugitive Slave Clause. The clause had originally described persons, quote, legally held in bondage, but members of the convention objected to the word legally as it may might have given the impression of the Constitution's favoring the idea of slavery was legal in a moral view. Instead, under the laws thereof was used. Nowhere can the word slavery be found in the Constitution. And this was deliberate. Most of the delegates hoped that the document would put the institution of slavery on the path of eventual extinction, and that there would be a time when former slaves would enjoy full rights under the Constitution. Former slave Frederick Douglass, who had once been a great critic of the Constitution, became one of its strongest defenders and called it, quote, a glorious liberty document, end quote, which he, quote, found to contain principles and purposes entirely hostile to the existence of slavery, end quote. It is difficult for us living in the 20th century America to understand, really 21st century America to understand, uh, why the founders love of liberty did not move them to give immediate freedom to the slaves. But as difficult as it is to imagine, we must recall how entrenched the institution of slavery was, was how deep prejudice ran, and, how, and the hostility and fear between the two races. Many citizens viewed slaves as subhuman, as property. <clears throat> no one, no matter how obtuse, could be insensible to the, to the slaves' anger and resentment at being denied justice. The prevalent fear was that the two races could not live in harmony with each other. How could former masters begin to treat, quote, property as full citizens and respect them, the full rights of free sl freed slaves? And was it possible for s former slaves simply to forgive their tormentors for the great evil inflicted upon them in their lives and their families? This was the quandary. This was what made Jefferson, quote, tremble for his country. Many have observed that the founding did not solve the problem of slavery, but actually created it. That is, the sentiments of the revolution raised America's consciousness and created a great anti-slavery movement in the 1780s. The ab abolitionist movement began. 
It was only after the revolution that the northern states began abolishing slavery, beginning with Pennsylvania in 1780. But the early 19th century, by the early 19th century, excuse me, slavery had disappeared from all northern states. It would later take a civil war and 600,000 lives lost in that war in the 19th century and a civil rights movement in the 20th century to right the wrongs of this evil. The founders' struggle with the existence of slavery should be considered in this light. What follows are some of the founding's thoughts, which I read a couple of the passages to you uh, uh, the other day. Now, here's uh, one last uh, segment that I want to read. This is the Northwest Ordinance, July 13, 1787. The Northwest Ordinance outlawed the spread of slavery in the new territories. It demonstrated that the founders fundamentally wanted to restrict slavery and that Congress and the, had the power to do it. When they were given the chance to restrict slavery, they did. This is what, how it reads. There shall be neither slavery nor involuntary servitude in the said territory, otherwise than in the punishment of crimes, whereof the party shall have been duly convicted, provided always that any person escaping into the same from whom labor or service is lawfully claimed in any of the original states, such fugitive may be lawfully reclaimed and conveyed to the person claiming his or her labor or service as for said, end quote. So as early as 1787, the founders were attempting to minimize and reduce the spread of slavery. This is a great th thought process to know, and uh, hopefully you enjoyed that excerpt.